Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of this course, Properties of Materials. So, let us just briefly recap first what we did in the last class. So, so in the last class, we first looked at differences between true and engineering strains. So, first thing that we saw that uh, true strain is equivalent in compression and tension, whereas engineering strain sorry true strain, whereas engineering strain is not and then true strain is additive. So, if you deform a material in different passes and you calculate the strain from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and then calculate the net strain, those all those pass strains they add up to net and then uh, the net volume change. If there is no volume change then epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 will be equal to 0, whereas this condition will not be obeyed by the uh, engineering strain. Then we looked at the cases of uh, small strain. So, we basically looked at the cases of uh, strain of small magnitudes and there we basically looked at what is shear strain and shear strain basically is, a, is, is defined as. Uh, so, you can say that for a 3D body with, dis with various displacements, you can define 3 shear strain gamma x y as uh, which is equal to gamma sorry gamma y x this is equal to del u by del y plus del v by del x. Similarly, you can write gamma uh, y z which is equal to gamma z y this is equal to gamma w del w divided by del y plus del v divided by del uh, z. Similarly, we can write gamma z x which is equal to gamma uh, x z which is equal to del w by del x plus del u by del z. You can write these also as uh, gamma 1 2 or gamma 2 1. These can be written as gamma 2 3 or gamma 3 2. Similarly, here you can write gamma 3 1 or gamma 1 3. So, these are the relations for shear stresses. So, now if you write the overall tensor, the tensor can be written as epsilon 1 2, epsilon sorry epsilon 1 1, 1 2, epsilon 1 3, epsilon 2 1, epsilon 2 2, epsilon 3 3, epsilon 3 sorry 2 3 and then 3 2 and then 3 3. Now, out of these, these three are principal strains and one on the off diagonal terms they are shear strains. So, mathematically speaking however, so the mathematical strain or we can say tensorial strain epsilon i j turns out to be half of uh, engineering shear strain. Okay. So, there is a whole derivation for it, we are, no, we are not going to go into that, but uh, the relation is epsilon i j is equal to half of gamma i j. So, if you just replace this here, so basically the way you define then epsilon uh, y z is equal to epsilon z y is equal to half of gamma y z, this is equal to half of del v by del z plus del w by del y. Similarly, you can write epsilon z x to be equal to epsilon x z, this will be half of gamma x z 
and this will be half of del w by del x plus del u by del z. Similarly, we can write comma epsilon x y which is equal to y x which is equal to epsilon y x which is equal to half of gamma x y or you can write gamma y x which is equal to half of del u by del y plus del v by del x. So, if you now replace uh, these uh, terms there, so what you get basically get is uh, epsilon i j will become equal to epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2, epsilon 3 3, these are the diagonal terms. Then we have half of gamma 1 2, half of gamma 1 3, here we have half of gamma 2 1 or 1 2 let us say, then we can write half of gamma 2 3, half of gamma 1 3 and half of gamma 2 3. So, this is what the strain tensor is going to look like. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to do transformation of we are going to apply the transformation of axis to to strains. Okay. We saw the transformation of axis to stress. Now, we will look at the transformation axis to strains. So, now, this is applicable only to small strains. We cannot apply to large strains because of deformation causing changes. So, the, the cosines the L values they change as the deformation happens on a large scale because the materials are mostly polycrystalline. So, as a result that grains deform they, 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 they reorient themselves along certain different directions. So, for example, for in the beginning your grain structure may be something like that and each grain has a different uh, crystalline orientation and when you deform it when you extend large deformation the grains may become like this. So, they may become oriented. So, as a result the stress and strain tensors will change because let us say if this was in this case the u v w was in this direction, this is u v w, this is u v w, this is u v w and so on and so forth. Like this. It is possible that in the in the deformed grain structure your u v w s will become something like this. To some extent, maybe not to this extent, this is very exaggerated picture, but what, what I am trying to convey is that your stress and strain tensor, your stress and strain tensors will change because the angles will change as a result. Uh, so, you will have a change in angles. So, as a result the, the L values will change and your, your stresses and strains with respect to reference axis will also be different. So, as a result uh, we cannot apply this to large strains, we can only apply it to smaller strains. So, this is something that we have to keep in mind. Now, the, the relation basically is similar. So, mathematical relation is very similar to basically you can say stress. So, we can say that epsilon uh, epsilon i j is equal to L i m into L j n to epsilon m n. So, the summation over different values of m and n is implicit. So, it is built in there. Okay. So, summation for m is equal to 1 to 3, n is equal to 1 to 3 is 
implicit. Okay. So, now let us take first example, let us take, so you can write epsilon x prime x prime or let us do it differently, let us try to do it in the or we can write epsilon 1 prime 1 prime. So, let us take the case of epsilon 1 prime 1 prime. So, if you look at the relation, we said that epsilon i j is equal to l i m l j n epsilon m n. Okay. So, i and j values are fixed. All right. So, this becomes basically, uh, so essentially we are going to sum over l of 1 prime m l of 1 prime n to epsilon m n. This is what the sum is going to be. So, if we, if we now write it, so this will be l 1 prime 1, l 1 prime 1 epsilon 1 1. Second term, so the m remains constant in the row. So, let us say it is 1 prime 1, 1 prime 2, n changes from 1 to 2 and this becomes epsilon 1 2. Similarly, we can write this as l 1 prime 1, l 1 prime 3 epsilon 1 3. The next one will be l 1 prime 2, l 1 prime 1 epsilon 2 1 plus l 1 prime 2, l 1 prime 2 epsilon 2 2 plus l 1 prime 2, l 1 prime 3 epsilon 2 3 and this will be epsilon 1 prime 3 epsilon l l 1 sorry l 1 prime 3 l 1 prime 1 epsilon 3 1. This will be l 1 prime 3 l 1 prime 2 epsilon 2 3 2 and this will be l 1 prime 3 l 1 prime 3 epsilon 3 3. Okay. So, we can now simplify this. So, we can make epsilon 1 1 is equal to epsilon 1, epsilon 2 2 as epsilon 2, epsilon 3 3 as epsilon 3 and uh, we convert these uh, epsilon i j uh, is equal to epsilon j i and epsilon i j is also equal to epsilon of gamma of half of gamma i j. So, if we make these replacements, what we get here is epsilon 1 prime is equal to L 1 prime 1 square epsilon 1 square plus L 1 prime 2 square epsilon 2 square plus L 1 prime 3 square epsilon 3 square plus L 1 prime L 1 prime 2 into L 1 prime 3 to gamma of 2 3 plus L 1 prime 3 L 1 prime 1 gamma of 3 1 plus L 1 prime 1 into L 1 prime 2 gamma 1 2. So, this will be the expression. So, you can see that 2's are missing here because we have replaced epsilon with gamma. So, as a result there is a factor of half. So, 2 and 2 they cancel each other in all the terms. So, as a result it becomes equal to 1. All right. So, this is the expression that we get for epsilon 1. Similarly, you can do things for epsilon 2 2 prime and epsilon 3 3 5 all the principal strains can be calculated in a similar manner. Now, let us say similarly if I want to do epsilon i if I want to work out epsilon i j okay. let us say so it could be epsilon, epsilon, epsilon x prime y prime or let us say we do epsilon 1 prime 2 prime. So, if I do epsilon 1 prime 2 prime again follow the same formula that is epsilon i j will become l i m l i n epsilon m n. So, essentially it becomes l 1 prime m 
l 2 prime n epsilon m n and this is what is going to be summed over. So, when you do this now it becomes l, I l 1 prime 1 l 2 prime 1 epsilon 1 1 plus l 1 prime 1 l 2 prime 2 epsilon 1 2 plus l 1 prime 1 l 2 prime 3 epsilon 1 3 plus l 1 prime 2 l 2 prime 1 epsilon 2 1 plus l 1 prime 2 l 2 prime 2 epsilon 2 2 plus l 1 prime 2 l 2 prime 3 epsilon 2 3 plus l 1 prime 3 l 2 prime 1 epsilon 3 1 plus l 1 prime 3 l 2 prime 2 epsilon 2 3 2 plus l 1 prime 3 l 2 prime 3 epsilon 3 3 and this will be the full expansion. So, if you now again modify by making epsilon i j is equal to epsilon j i and epsilon i j is equal to half of gamma i j and then we can modify this as. So, we can write this in terms of gamma 1 prime 2 prime this will become equal to 2 into L 1 prime 1 L 2 prime 1 epsilon 1 plus L 1 prime 2 L 2 prime 2 epsilon 2 plus L 1 prime 3 L 2 prime 3 as epsilon 3 and then we will have the terms related to uh, gamma 1 2 gamma 2 3 and gamma 3 1. So, so this will be L 1 prime 1 L 2 prime 2 plus L 1 prime 2 L 2 prime 1 into gamma 1 2 plus uh, L 1 prime 2 L 2 prime 3 plus L 1 prime 3 into L 2 prime 2 epsilon uh, gamma 2 3 and plus we can make it L 1 prime 1 L 2 prime 3 plus L 1 prime 3 L 2 prime 1 into epsilon uh, 3 2 sorry epsilon 1 3. Uh, what have we taken just one second 1 prime 2 2 prime 3 1 prime 3 2 prime 2 this is epsilon 2 gamma 2 3 and this will be gamma 3 1 or 1 3. So, this will be the full expansion for gamma 1 prime 2. So, as a homework try expressions for uh, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3. Similarly, you should try the expressions for let us say 1 prime 3, 2 prime, 3 prime and so on and so forth. Okay. So, so, this will help you practice uh, on how to write these uh, transforms. So, this is what is about the uh, transformation of strains you can do a simple problem on this. So, I will not do it in here, but a simple problem is to verify whether it works at small. So, simple problem can deal with large versus small strains. So, this could be let us say you take a block of dimension let us say a by a in x and y. So, this deforms let us say to a very small change. 
So, this could be d x and this could be d y. Okay. So, let us say this becomes from a to I do not know 1.02 a and this whole thing and this thing becomes sorry. point nine eight a. So, you can work out. So, the thing that you have to do is that work out. Uh, so, you can just look at the diagonal let us say in this case and diagonal in the next case. So, work out diagonal lengths. calculate strain uh, using diagonal and then calculate strain using. So, let us say this is the reference axis. So, the axis of axis will. So, this is x y this will be your x prime. So, assuming that the angle is close to 90 degrees you can work out the strains as it will be epsilon. So, you can say epsilon 1 prime will be equal to L 1 prime 1 epsilon 1 uh, sorry into L 1 prime 2 square epsilon 2. So, this will be the x strain this will be the y strain and you can see whether the values match or not and you will see the values will match. Okay. So, when you calculate so there will be a match all right. When you do the same thing for a large deformation, so for a large deformation situation is like this. So, you have x y, you have this block. So, this was a and a, this block changes to something else. So, here we have a change which is let us say this is 1.5 a and this is 0 0.67 a assuming that the volume remains the constant. So, this is how you have to choose. So, again so again look at the diagonal. Okay. So, calculate. So, instead of what you can do is that instead of using true strain uh, you can use engineering strain use engineering strain. for simplicity or if you want to use or even true strain. So, both of them should give you that at least a rough idea. Okay. So, you calculate the diagonal related strain and again calculate the strain from transformation of axis. So, this will become x prime, but here you can see the angles are not no longer 45 degrees. So, as a result uh, in this case it is 45 degree, but in this case it is not equal to 45 degrees. So, you will have to work out the angles clearly and you will see the strains will not match. So, this will be sort of homework for you. So, what you have to do is that you take this block carry out a small amount of deformation where the strain is very small calculate the calculate the strain. So, what you have to do is that basically you you look at you carry out a small deformation with very small strain calculate the strain using diagonal and then calculate the strain using transformation of axis and you will see both the strains will nearly match. But if you carry out a large deformation Again you apply the same procedure you will see that the strains will not match and this will sort of give you an idea of uh, why is it applicable at smaller strain and so why is it not applicable. So, let us now we are nearly at the end of the lecture. So, let us summarize this lecture. So, what we have done is basically we have looked at the we have looked at the transformation of uh, transformation of axis in, in uh, for strain. We also looked at uh, the relation between 
epsilon i j and gamma i j. So, we saw that epsilon i j is equal to half of gamma i j for mathematical reasons. So, this is this is basically shear strain which is the engineering shear strain. So, essentially you calculate using this tan theta right this is theta. So, this is delta deformation and this is the original length let us say L naught. So, tan theta will be equal to delta divided by L naught. For very small angles this can be for small theta I can write this as theta which is equal to delta divided by L naught and basically it was uh, the shear strain. So, del gamma i j was equal to let us say for example, uh, 1 2 was equal to gamma. Uh, so, del u by del y plus del v by del x all right. Uh, so, this was the shear strain whereas, this is the overall train that you get for. Uh, so, this combines basically both translations in both the directions. So, this is, is for mathematical. So, this is your mathematical strain you can say and it can be proved that this mathematical strain is equal to half of gamma i j. You do not have time to go through the derivation here, but if you look into any, any books on mecha mechanics you can, you can easily find about it. And then I have given you a problem on how to examine the differences at small and large deformations. So, this, this is something you have to do as a homework. So, we will stop here today. In the, in the next lecture, we will we have done the discussion on basically the, the tensorial stress, tens, the tensor form of stresses, the tensor form of strains, the trans transformation of axis in both cases. What we have not done is the most circle thing, but if we get time later on we will do it, uh, but that is uh, that's something you can read from the books and, uh, uh, and, and so using this information uh, you can get into the mechanics of uh, deformation if you know the tensorial way of working with stress and strain. So, now what we will start is we will we'll basically move into elastic uh, theory of elasticity for various materials. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.